Jannah. So the boy, he said, Allah Azza wa Jalla, save me from them. He said, you will not be able to kill me until you do what I command you to do. The king said, Wama huwa, what is it? He said, the young, the young boy said to him, again, look at this knowledge. He said, Tajma'a nasi Sa'idin wahid wa taslubni ala jidha. He said, gather all the people in one place and tie me to the trunk of a tree. Thumma khud sahma min kinanati and take an arrow from my, from my quiver, meaning the bag of arrows. Thumma da'i saham fi kabid al qaws And then place the arrow upon the bow and then say, Bismillah rabbil ghulam. Look at this wisdom of this young boy. Young in age, but great insight. He said, when you're going to fire the arrow, say in the name of Allah, the Lord of the boy. It's da'wah. In the name of Allah, Bismillah Rabbil Ghulam. And this shows the excellent, excellence of what? Saying Bismillah. In the name of Allah. That's why before you eat, say Bismillah. And there are many other instances. Before you make wudu, Bismillah. Before even relations, Bismillah. And this other dua is well naam. But showing the excellence of what? Bismillah. In the name of Allah. Seeking the aid of Allah Azza wa Jal. Seeking the blessings by mentioning the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he said to, the young boy said to the king, say in the name of Allah, the Lord of the boy. So if the king was to say this or command someone to say it, it means that he's yani, condoning belief in Allah. That Allah Azza wa Jal is the all powerful. The one who is able to do all things. The one in control of life and death. And not himself. He's removing those qualities from himself. He's acknowledging, he doesn't know, the king's acknowledging that he's weak. And Allah is al qawi al aziz. So he said, Thumma qul, the young boy said to him, then say in the name of Allah, the Lord of the boy, and then fire the arrow. فَإِنَّكَ إِذَا فَعَلْتَ ذَلِكَ قَتَلْتَنِي He said, if you do that, you'll be able to kill me. فَجَمَعَ النَّاسِ فِي سَعِيدٍ وَاحِدٍ The king gathered all of the people. That's what I'm saying. As a young person, don't think that you're not relevant. If you are upon Tawheed and Sunnah, and Allah blesses you with insight and wisdom, through you it's possible Allah could guide a nation. But again, where are you going to find it? You're not going to find it in, you know, uh, White Hart Lane. That's Tottenham, I think, right? Is it? White Hart Lane? You're not going to find it at Tottenham's ground or Arsenal. No, you're not going to find it even amongst the youth. Raising youth is problematic. Because one, the younger we are, the less experience we have. Obviously, in life, you gain wisdom as you go along. So when young kids are just raised by young kids, it's problematic. That's why, look, the young boy, he was nurtured with who? The rahib, the monk, person of knowledge, somebody who was a bit older. When you're around people that are older than you, you see how they conduct themselves. You see how, yes, you benefit from their knowledge, you benefit from their wisdom, you benefit from their adab, akhlaq. Some young kids today, you go somewhere, you're like, subhanallah, what are you doing? That's why it's important for the youth to be nurtured, starting with the senior scholars. When you learn from the scholars, yes, you learn their knowledge, but you learn their adab, their etiquettes. How did they deal with situations? Because you may have knowledge. Some people, they have knowledge, but they lack wisdom. If you lack wisdom, you don't know how to apply that knowledge. So sometimes you will cause more harm than you will bring about benefit because you lack wisdom, but you have knowledge. So knowledge, yes, you sit in the circles of knowledge and you benefit from the elders who are around you, older than you. And you consult those who are older than you and you ask. You may agree sometimes and you may disagree, but at least you have a, a deeper understanding about certain things. So this young boy, they, The king gathered all of the people in one place and they tied him to a, t a tree trunk. And then they took an arrow from the quiver, from the, the bag of arrows, and they placed it upon the bow. And then he said, Bismillah Rabbil Ghulam, in the name of Allah, the Lord of the boy. And then they fired the arrow, and the arrow it struck the boy in the temple. The boy he placed his hand upon his temple where the arrow had struck him. And he died. The people, they witnessed this. They said, we believe in the Lord of the boy. All of the people, look, an entire nation. They said, we believe in the Lord of this young boy. A young boy. Again, it could be a young woman. 
That's why young people, they need examples, examples that we say, mashallah, look, this young brother, he's, a memor he's memorized the Quran, he leaves the salah, he's teaching in the tahveed, mashallah, look how good he is to his mother, mashallah, look, he works, he does that, or he's a doctor or whatever. Naam, look, that's the example that you need to look up to. Or even young sisters, mashallah, she's memorized the Quran, she teaches Quran, she teaches Islamic studies, she's teaching the children. That's mashallah, the example that you need to look up to. Not rappers. Not the most corrupt and immoral of the people. Not people like that because even this is the danger. This is the danger I see with a lot of young people from amongst the Muslims. We're looking for role models from anyone who says something that is perceived as positive about Islam, even if they have a thousand falsehoods with them, like Andrew Tate. That's his name, right? Andrew Tate, okay, he says one good thing about Islam. What about his other filthy opinions about women? What are you going to say about that? Are you that desperate for a role model that you're going to... And that's why those shows, the Dean show, they should be embarrassed. That's why I say these individuals, they have hajar. Did they invite Sheikh Fawzan upon the Dean show? Did they invite any of the senior scholars? I've never seen it. Hasba ilmi. I can only speak upon my knowledge. Do any of you know any of the senior scholars that have been on there? One alim rabbani from the ulama of the ummah that the scholars they testify to, not someone that comes and just tells us they're an expert. And again, an academic said to me, but you, you're saying that you don't have no scholars amongst you in the West? I said, your definition of a scholar and our definition of a scholar, it may be dif different. They said, how is that? I said, to you a scholar is somebody that graduated or studied with the sheikh. Your definition, there are. Our definition, we look at scholars like Sheikh Muhammad. If I'm looking up a hadith, I go and there's a whole section. Sharh Sahih Muslim, Sharh Nasai, Sharh Tirmidhi, Nam, he hasn't completed it, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, Sharh a part of Ibn Majah. Every library that's a serious student of knowledge, they have these books. Name one book that we're returning to of these so called scholars of the West. Give me one book in Arabic. Can you name one? One book of these so called scholars that we should be going to in the West. Sheikh Al Albani, we could have a whole section of his library in just checking of hadith. Sheikh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, a whole section. Ibn al-Qayyim, Sheikh Ibn al-Thaymin, Shuruhat, just from his lectures, whole library. That the Ummah, those who like them and dislike them, they return to it and they benefit, even if they don't admit it. Naam, Ikhwan. Sometimes Muslim youth will look, somebody says something, one positive thing about Islam, we're ready to khalas. Promote that person, interview them, you know, make them seem that there's something that has something special. No, they're not. Wallahi, any truth that he says, it's in Quran and Sunnah. And the danger is when the ignorant listen to them, Wallahi, many times they can't differentiate between what is haq and what is falsehood. In America, some guys, brothers came to me and they said, Akhi, have you heard about the red pill movement? I said, Akhi, I studied pharmacy. I never heard about red pills. What are red pills? Ishua. So they've explained to me, red pill is, I think, reality, and the blue, blue pill is the matrix, and nonsense like that. They, uh, that's how oblivious I am, but they're explaining to me, red pill. And they're saying it's a movement that talks about masculinity and stuff like that. Wallahi, I didn't even know what it was. I said, Akhi, barakallahu feekum. I said, any truth that they say is in Quran and Sunnah. Alhamdulillah, marriage, Allah has legislated regulations and laws. Are you aware of all of the Islamic legislations as it relates to marriage? They say, no, I'm not. Why are you going and listening to red pills? That movement, why? Are we that desperate for something else? And as I said, the danger comes with the falsehood that they have. So they may say, like a fortune teller, one truth, but the 99 falsehoods. And then, because you don't know, you take those 99 falsehoods. Then you're going home, you're looking at your wife. Ah, go to the kitchen, you're like a slave. Ish hadha. Hadha laysa be deen. Allah Azza raised the woman, gave her rights. They were burying their daughters alive, some of them in the Arabian Peninsula. Allah Azza prohibited that. Allah Azza gave women rights. Before many societies knew what women's rights were, Islam gave women rights. Clearly in the book of Allah Azza wa So anything that they have that is truth, it's in Quran and Sunnah. The danger is you. Are you that grounded in knowledge of the Sharia ah, that you can recognize those 99 forces that they're going to come with and it's inevitable? Don't we have enough role models? Don't we have enough role models amongst the scholars, amongst, amongst the righteous, 
And that's problematic because when we put forward to the Muslim youth that, and we give these people prestige that they don't deserve, and these individuals are, some of them are kuffar, and some of them are immoral, some of them are Muslims, but some of them are fusaq, or some of them are juhal. You're giving again, you're, go, you're trying to escape one problem and you're, you're, you're creating another problem. You should be telling them, your role model is Sheikh Fawzan, your role model is Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al abbad meaning living role models. Your role model is Sheikh Abdul Aziz al sheikh Sheikh Rabi'ah, or the other scholars that are living. Or your role models, if you want, the Sahaba. Before the companions, the prophets and the messengers, are we that in need of role models that we have to turn to these immoral individuals like Andrew Tate and other than them? And I don't know all of his views, but I can guarantee you that this man has some filthy and repugnant views. I can guarantee it. With regards to the way that women are to be treated. Islam doesn't allow the mistreatment of an animal, let alone the mistreatment of your sister in Islam. Now, so the story continues the the people, all of the people, they said, I believe in the Lord of this boy. I believe, they said it three times. Amanna bi rabbil ghulam. Amanna bi rabbil ghulam. Three times. We believe in the Lord of this boy. We believe in the Lord of this boy. فَأُتِيَ الْمَلِكْ فَقِيلَ لَهُ Then some people, they came to the king and they said, أَرَأَيْتَ مَا كُنْتَ تَحْذَرُ Remember what you feared, meaning he feared that the people were going to believe in Allah and abandon him. Because he called the people to believe in him billah, Because he claimed lordship He said, remember what you feared What you feared has occurred Meaning all of the people they believed in Allah Azza wa Jal So what did he do? So the person said Qad aman al nas. The people, all of them have believed فَأَمَرَ بِالْأُخْدُودِ بِأَفْوَاهِ سِكَكْ فَخُدَّتْ Then he commanded that pits be dug Look at that, subhanAllah, not caring, mass genocide. That's what a tyrant, if there's no accountability, that's what some tyrants they end up doing. So you see that this individually commanded that ditches be dug at the beginning of the past and that fires be lit. And then he commanded and he said, Man lam yarja an dini. Whoever doesn't re renounce their religion, whoever doesn't leave and forsake their religion, Throw them into these ditches, burn them alive. And at the end of the hadith, there comes a beautiful benefit. A woman, she came and she had a young child. And when she approached the pit, she became hesitant. You know, she became hesitant. Obviously, she has a child with her. The child said, Ya umma, ispiri fa innaki ala al haq. The young child said to the mother, Oh, my mother, be patient for verily upon the truth. The mother's about to be thrown into a pit of a ditch of burning fire. The child said to the mother, Oh, my mother, Ya umma, ispiri, be patient fa innaki ala al haq. Verily upon the truth. That's the benefit of righteous children. Even they, and they remind their parents. Look at that, subhanAllah, a child saying to the mother, oh my mother, a woman, in that predicament, and everybody knows that the, the compassion and the mercy and the love and the affection that the mother has for the child. The child said, oh my mother, even though we're going to be thrown into a burning ditch, be patient, why? Because you're upon the truth. That is why youth, your shabab, be patient because you're upon the truth. But being patient, be patient learning it. Be patient applying it and be patient with the difficulties come encountered upon it. And Allah Azza wa Jalla subhanahu wa ta'ala promises you success. If you can be patient to do that, Allah Azza wa Jalla promises you success and Allah promises you that you will leave behind a legacy. That you will leave behind a legacy. It's possible that one of you, Allah knows best, Allah Azza wa Jalla blesses with knowledge, implementation and da'wah. And through you, Allah Azza wa Jal subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a great change as it relates to the condition or the state of people in society. And that leaves mention of you hundreds and hundreds of years, centuries after you've departed this earth. And the ulama, they derive, that, they derive this from the saying of Allah Azza wa Jal, وَرَفَعَنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكَ Shaykh Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentions it. 
and we have raised you Muhammad in mention. And look, we, when we mention the Prophet وسلم, we send a salat and salam upon him. And all of the Muslims all over the earth, they do it. Shaykh al-Islam said, the more a person adheres to the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, they will have a share of that. Yes, when you adhere to the sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, the more that you adhere to his sunnah, you will have a share of that mention. Meaning you will be mentioned, why? Because you revived the sunnah, you called to the sunnah. Imam Ahmad, they know him as what? Imam Ahli Sunnah. Why? Because when the rulers of his time, they were forcing the people to say the Quran was created, Imam Ahmad refused and he said, La, Al Quran, Kalam Allah, Ghayru Makhluk. The Quran is the speech of Allah uncreated. He's known as Imam Ahli Sunnah. Even before Imam Ahmad, the Sahaba, we talk about the companions even, into, even today and mention them, their mahasin. If you go to Bukhari, you go to Muslim, you have, a, you have chapters. Fadail al-Sahaba, the virtues of the companions, preserved along with the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. Do you think, Ikhwan, when Imam Muslim or Bukhari and the other ulama, muhaddithun, ahl al-hadith, when they compiled these books, they included Fadail al-Sahaba just yani, haphazardly without reason? No. No, because obviously the companions, they convey the Quran and the sunnah, but also so that we try and imitate them in that which is virtuous and good. Alhamdulillah, with that I'll stop. Wajazakumullah khairan. Anything that, that I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaytan and Allah and his messenger are free from that.